Okay, so today we're going back to basics. Volcano basics, but don't worry, we're not going to make you mix baking soda and vinegar. Unless you want to. <laughs> right. But seriously, we're looking at volcanoes from learningmall.com. It's meant for kids, but, you know, sometimes those simple explanations are where the real gold is, right? Absolutely. Sometimes you got to go back to basics to really appreciate the complexities. Totally. And the source does a great job breaking down volcanoes, what they are, the types, why they're more than just fiery explosions. Yeah. And that analogy they use, the shaken up soda bottle to explain eruptions. Classic, but it works. Right. So simple, but it really gets the point across. But before we get to the explosions, let's start with, well, what is a volcano? This source calls it a mountain with a molten secret. And I like how it emphasizes that volcanoes are proof that Earth is always changing. You know, it's not just a static thing. Yeah, that's key. It's easy to think of mountains as like permanent fixtures. But volcanoes are a good reminder that Earth is dynamic, always in motion. They're evidence of what's happening way down below the surface. It's like Earth has this hidden life, this molten heart that sometimes bursts out and reminds us it's there. And speaking of different personalities, the source talks about three main types of volcanoes, right? Shield, composite, and cinder cone. It's like a whole volcano family reunion. Uh -huh. I like that. So who's the most laid back relative at this reunion? Hmm. Well, in that analogy, I'd say shield volcanoes are the chill uncles, you know, spread out gentle slopes. The source uses the Hawaiian Islands as an example, which makes sense. Those shield volcanoes just kind of slowly ooze lava over millions of years, building up the islands. Creation on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. Rivers of molten rock just reshaping the landscape. What do you think, what caused such a hot spot to form in the middle of the Pacific plate? Right. It makes you realize even those chill volcanoes are capable of some serious geological engineering. But then you've got composite volcanoes. They're the dramatic ants of the family. Those iconic cone-shaped mountains, the ones known for big explosive eruptions, Mount Fuji, Vesuvius, those are the rock stars. Absolutely. And remember that soda bottle. Composite volcanoes are the ones where the pressure just builds and builds until, bam, eruption. Talk about raw power. Okay, that's both terrifying and amazing at the same time. So we've got slow and steady, explosively dramatic. Uh, what about cinder cone volcanoes? Where do they fit in? The source calls them simple, but that seems a little underwhelming after those first two. Don't let the word fool ya. What they lack in size, they make up for in speed. These are like the pop stars of the volcano world. The source mentions one in Mexico. Perry popped up in a farmer's field in 1941 and grew over 1,000 feet tall in just a few years. Whoa, talk about a surprise in your backyard. It makes you wonder what triggers that sudden activity and like if it can happen in a field, could it happen anywhere? That's what I love about volcanoes, always full of surprises. For sure. And speaking of surprises, the source mentions that volcanoes aren't always about destruction. They've got a creative side too, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, we talked about how they make new land, but there's more, right? Definitely. Think about it. Volcanic eruptions bring up minerals from deep inside the earth, and that stuff makes the soil super fertile. That's why so many areas around volcanoes are known for being great for agriculture. So not just dramatic landscapes, but great places to grow, like tomatoes. Who knew volcanoes had a green thumb? Exactly. And there's more. We talked about volcanoes as a sign of a dynamic earth, but they also play a part in regulating the planet's temperature. Those volcanic gases like carbon dioxide act kind of like a thermostat, keeping things warm enough for life. Now that is wild. It's this whole cycle of destruction and creation, and volcanoes are right there in the middle of it all. They're essential to how our planet works, both geologically and biologically. It's incredible. But before we get too, you know, existential about it, the source throws in some awesome fun facts. Ready for a rapid fire round? Hit me with it. Okay, get this. The largest volcano in the solar system isn't even on Earth, it's on Mars. Olympus Mons. Now that is a volcano. Dwarfs anything we've got here. Okay, so tell me more about this Olympus Mons. How big are we talking? Well, imagine this. It's three times the height of Mount Everest. You know, Everest, tallest mountain on Earth. And it's so wide that if you were standing at the base, you wouldn't even be able to see the summit because the curvature of Mars would block it. That's how massive this thing is. That is mind-boggling. What could even create a volcano on that scale? Are we talking like super-powered Martian lava or something? That's a great question. One that scientists are still trying to fully figure out. Well, I'm already hooked. Olympus Mons sounds like a deep dive for another day. It totally does. But first, let's see what other volcano facts this learning mole quiz has in store. All right, lay it on me. What else you got? Well, aside from Olympus Mons, there's this other cool volcano fact. Did you know there are volcanoes erupting right now that we can't even see? 
Wait, what? How is that even possible? Because they're underwater. The source mentions them, but I think it's worth uh, diving in a little deeper, so to speak. These underwater volcanoes are incredibly powerful. Think about it. Molten rock pushing through thousands of feet of ocean. Wow, that's wild. I never really thought about underwater volcanoes before, but it makes sense. Like, the Earth's crust doesn't just stop at the edge of the ocean, right? Exactly. Some of the most active volcanic zones are mid-ocean ridges, where those tectonic plates are spreading apart. Magma rises up, and boom, underwater eruption. So that's how new seafloor is made. That's incredible. It is. And just like on land, these eruptions can create new landforms, even whole islands sometimes. Iceland, for example. It was built by underwater volcanoes over millions of years. Oh, right. The source mentioned Iceland. It's amazing to think this whole island nation exists because of volcanoes erupting under the waves. Talk about the power of geology to shape our world. Yay. And speaking of shaping the world, the source also mentions that volcanoes can actually affect the weather. What do you think about that? That's strange, right? It is kind of weird. I always thought of weather as its own thing, you know, rain, clouds, all that. Not really connected to, like, the ground exploding. You're saying volcanoes can mess with global temperatures. How does that even work? So it all comes down to what gets released during an eruption. Gases, particles, that kind of thing. Big eruptions can shoot tons of sulfur dioxide way up into the stratosphere. Okay, and the stratosphere, remind me. Right, it's the layer of atmosphere above where most of our weather happens. And up there, that sulfur dioxide can react and form these tiny particles called aerosols. They're really reflective, so they bounce sunlight back into space which actually cools the planet. Whoa, so volcanoes are like natural AC units, mm. releasing stuff that cools the planet. That seems ironic, since we usually think of volcanoes as hot and fiery. It is kind of funny when you think about it like that. Sure. But it shows how even these destructive events can have unexpected consequences, and it highlights how interconnected everything on Earth is. Something happening in one place can ripple out and affect the whole planet. Mm which yeah. actually ties back to those volcanic gases we talked about before, the ones that regulate temperature. Right. You said they're like a thermostat. What's the deal with that? Sounds important if it affects the whole planet's temperature. It is. So those sulfate aerosols we talked about, those can cause short-term cooling. But it's the volcanic gases, especially carbon dioxide, that really matter for long-term climate. Volcanic activity naturally releases carbon dioxide. And as you probably know, that's a greenhouse gas. Yeah, greenhouse gases trap heat, keep the planet warm enough for us, but too much, and that's when you get global warming, right? Exactly. And it's a balancing act. Over millions of years, volcanoes have released a lot of carbon dioxide, contributing to the greenhouse effect, making Earth livable. But too much volcanic activity, especially quickly, can throw things out of whack and cause big climate shifts. So volcanoes are kind of a double-edged sword when it comes to climate. They can heat things up or cool things down. This is fascinating. But before we go too far down the climate change rabbit hole, I want to circle back to those massive shield volcanoes, you know, like in Hawaii and, of course, Olympus Mons on Mars. What makes them grow so huge? Well, remember how we were talking about tectonic plates and mid-ocean ridges? Mm -hmm. Shield volcanoes, they often pop up over what are called hot spots. They're areas of volcanic activity that aren't necessarily on a plate boundary. So hot spots are like underground furnaces that just keep pumping out lava no matter what the tectonic plates above them are doing. Precisely. And because the plates move, but the hot spot stays put, you get these chains of volcanoes forming over time, like the Hawaiian Islands. Each island is a volcano that formed over the same hot spot as the Pacific plate slowly moved over it. That is so cool. So each Hawaiian island is like a snapshot of this ongoing volcanic process. You got it. And because shield volcanoes have those gentler eruptions, the lava flows build up over time, making those broad, floating mountains, not the steep cones we see with explosive eruptions. And that brings us back to Olympus Mons. That monster volcano. You think it formed over a hot spot too? It's definitely possible. One theory is that Olympus Mons formed over a hot spot that was way more active, way longer lived than anything we've got here on Earth. Wow, a super-powered Martian hotspot. It really makes you wonder what other crazy volcanic stuff is out there in the solar system. It really does. But before we blast off to other planets, we should probably take a quick break. When we come back, I want to dig a bit deeper into this idea of volcanoes as creators, how they've actually helped shape life itself. Ooh, that sounds awesome. All right, listeners, grab your geology textbooks and your thinking caps because things are about to get even more volcanic after the break. Okay, deep divers, we're back. And before we wrap up this volcanic adventure, we have to talk about how these forces of destruction, these volcanoes, have actually played a huge GE role in how life developed on Earth. 
It's weird to think about, right? That something that can cause so much damage can also be essential for life. It really is. We talked before about how volcanic soil is super fertile, all those minerals from underground. But you were saying there's an even deeper connection between volcanoes and like the whole history of life on Earth, right? Something about hitting the reset button. Exactly. It's not just about the soil. It's how eruptions can completely change the landscape, wipe the slate clean. And that gives new species a chance to appear, adapt, and thrive. So it's like volcanoes hit fast forward on evolution. Kind of, yeah. Imagine an eruption creates a new island chain. Uh -huh. At first they're barren, but then they become these open canvases for life to colonize. Whatever gets there first, by wind or water or whatever, they have this whole new world, not a lot of competition, all these opportunities to evolve. It's like winning the evolutionary lottery. But it's wow. not just about getting there first, is it? They have to adapt to this new environment too. Totally. And that's where it gets really cool. These isolated volcanic spots often have really unique conditions, different climates, soil, fewer predators. Over time, the species that end up there, they develop these specialized traits to survive in that very specific environment. It's like the Galapagos Islands. Those are like the textbook example of how isolation on volcanic islands can create tons of different species. Right, those Galapagos finches, different beaks for different food sources, classic example, that wouldn't exist without the volcanoes that made those islands in the first place. So volcanoes aren't just creating land, they're setting the stage for evolution to do its thing in these amazing ways. It's kind of beautiful and a little bit mind-blowing when you think about it. Definitely. It shows that even when faced with these destructive forces, life finds a way. Yeah. It adapts, it changes, it creates. And in the process, it creates a world that's truly stunning. This whole deep dive has been eye-opening. We started with a kid's quiz about volcanoes, and look where we ended up. That's the power of curiosity. You never know where it'll lead you. Seriously. We went from the Earth's core to Mars, uncovered secrets of geology, and how life itself has been shaped by these forces. Not a bad way to spend some time, huh? Not bad at all. And who knows what other volcanic mysteries are out there just waiting to be discovered, both on Earth and across the universe. There you go. Something to think about. And to our listeners, we'll leave you with this. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and never underestimate a simple question. You never know what you might discover. We'll catch you next time.